Hickok 45 here. And guess what? My CCW today is a CCP from Walther. Let's see if it'll shoot. I got it in my do-all holster. I'm gonna pull it out and shoot something. <laughs> I'm gonna come. Nice, nice. Woo, let's put it back in the holster and draw it again. Because that desperado down there needs to be engaged. <laughs> Yeah, we've got the Walther CCP uh, as requested by many of you <laughs> and, uh, for information of all sorts. This is one that, uh, well, it's been kind of slow becoming available, I think, partly because I've uh, requested it. I, I requested it from Walther a long time ago. Seems like, gosh, seems like it's been a long time ago. So anyway, we just finally went through Buds and then since they have contacted and said they could get us one, all that. So it's available now, but... Uh, it's interesting gun, interesting pistol. It's a, a nine millimeter in a single stack. All right, it's their their uh, pistol in this category. All right, whether you want to, we're not going to compare it with thirty nine different uh, firearms, but you know the Shield and the Glock forty three and all the single stack nines. Except it does hold eight rounds in a flush magazine. Okay and uh, comes with two mags and i have the other one in my pocket here and that's all we have are those two mags and you know what i think before i proceed i just can't resist emptying that magazine it is a magazine that is loaded is uh it's basically meant to be emptied the way i look at it <laughs> not a bad little Not a bad little shooter, I'll have to say, okay? Because I've got some negatives on the gun, but I've got some positives. So if you're thinking about this gun and you have picked it up at a gun show or gun shop, you put it in your hand and you thought, whoa, that feels good. Uh, I can believe it because it feels really good to me. And there's something about shooting the thing I've noticed. I've shot it for a couple, three days here off and on. And it... It, now I may not hear anything today, but it it feels uh, I keep wanting to say shootable. You just you feel like you can just hit stuff with it, and you can. All right, because uh, uh, I have might not today, but it's it's just a really good little shooter. Now it's a better shooter than it ought to be for some reason to me in a lot of ways because it's got a long reset, and it's you know it's just got a well. Let me show you the reset before I take it apart. Uh, okay, well. That's part of it. Okay, click. Now I'm gonna cock it. Now watch for it all the way back into there. So there's a long reset. And in fact, when you're shooting, sometimes you think, uh, okay, oh, oh it's it. no, it's not empty. It's just, it's just the reset's pretty far back. It's something you get used to, though. I think because it's other than that, it's it's just. It shoots well. I don't know. It's hard to describe. There are some negatives, though, and there's some positives. Let's look at uh, the thing. It's funny. Someone wrote me the other day in, uh, on Facebook and, and, and said, well, I, want you, I want you to do When are you going to do the CCP? People are giving their trash and it all over the Internet about how hard it is to break down and disassemble. I said, okay, I, don't, I hadn't done that yet, really. It's hard to disassemble or you know, put it back together. And I had not done it. Well, so I, I got it out and, uh, well, I need to shoot the thing and uh, start shooting it. And uh, and I I couldn't figure out how you would take it down, so I had to resort to the very last measure, get out the instruction manual, and I did, and I figured it out from that because I can read on a good day. And I see why people would complain about it because I was about ready to throw it in the ditch the first day I did it, and uh, I thought, oh my gosh, what a, this is going to be a real bashing video, and uh, but. Since I've done it a few times, though, I'll have to say, in defense of the firearm, it's gotten easier. The thing you have to do is so different is uh, you've got to depress this little button here. You've got to push up. It's got a hook. It hooks there, the back of the slide. And it, the thing is, it's 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 like a next generation of a little PPK. You know, it's got a fixed barrel. So you've got to push in on that, okay, and then lift up, now, first of all. Let me give you the overall. Basically, with this gun, you're going to pull back and lift up on the rear of the slide, and it's going to come out just like a PPK or something. Okay, and some of the bursts and everything that are designed after that. Okay, so that's what you have to do. But additionally, 
well, let me stick my finger in your eye if you're close to the computer screen, but I'm, I'm gonna have to try to hold it. Let's see, I did, I did make sure it was, no, I didn't. Yeah, you gotta do that, make sure it's, yep, yeah, let me double. Obviously, it didn't fire, so it's really clear, and I pulled the trigger. That's what you have to do, okay, because the way you have to grab it and everything, you wanna make doubly sure it's, so you push on that, release the hook, and lift up, and I'm having trouble. They provide this little tool and we'll tell you a screwdriver there you go a screwdriver will work too okay so you just get it up like that and it comes off all right now that's around the barrel so it reminds you probably the ppk you got a fixed barrel all right you got a little piston there so it's a different design than a lot of these other pistols and it's a it has a delayed uh, blowback it's a blowback but it's a delayed blowback it's got a gas system on it they call it the soft coil it's supposed to reduce the recoil and all this and it is interesting the way it works now whether you like it or not or you'd want it or not it's another matter but there's a, a hole in the barrel this is kind of a gas block in a way there's a hole just forward of the chamber in there where the gas goes down into this this uh tube down here and it pushes on this piston this piston goes in there you know it's typical piston you see in various firearms and as you can see the end of that that hole under the barrel down there this piston slides into that all right now if you can imagine that piston in that hole well the gas going down into that chamber and pushing on that is actually pushing the slide forward the opposite direction needs to go when you fire the round right so what happens is the as long as the bullets in the barrel the pressure is pushing on the slide pushing it forward it's holding it in place okay now as soon as the bullet leaves the barrel then that allows that pressure to decrease and then uh, the slide retracts and, and everything okay now it's supposed to make a softer recoiling firearm you got all that action going on and allow a, a weaker spring instead of if this were a true just blowback as i understand now from my reading if it were just your standard like a 380 blowback then uh it would it'd be tough to do that with a nine millimeter and have an incredible recoil and all that because it's just a spring that's that's doing the work okay so let me uh put him back together and i'll show you here what you have to do you have to line up the piston and i think that's all i wanted to show you when i had it apart yeah uh the, kind of the tricky part a couple of tricky steps yeah getting the piston in the hole there which i have now now I've got to also do the same thing on the return trip here with the slide. I've got to push that in, push it down, and there it is. Okay, so you've got to be ready to do that. And many of you will have trouble because you're not quite as coordinated as I am, right? I mean, you can just tell, right, from the video. <laughs> no, actually, uh, once you've done it a few times, uh, it will it will go together smoothly for you. Now, if I if you had seen me when I did this the first two or three times, you would laughed quite a bit uh i didn't laugh because I, I was getting frustrated but once i realized how i needed to hold what i have discovered i saw a guy in a video doing it after i figured out how it was best for me i think it was at the wall their website and he seemed like he was putting it down on the table and pushing down and doing that but i don't know that didn't work for me i just to get it in there and and what was i i've discovered i just get my thumb on it that works pretty well see it's lifted up it's ready to go off there but to basically you got to be careful or go flying across the, the room or the, the field or the yard or wherever you have it so anyway that that would be uh, a negative as compared with other pistols because most pistols these days break down very very simply don't they like you know well let's not i'll tell you what let me, i'll do something un unusual for you okay i won't compare it with a glock i'll compare it with the mp lock it back turn down and yeah, it comes right off, right? <laughs> so, so that's definitely different, isn't it? Uh, whether it's a Glock or an m &P, they just come apart, you know, much more simply than that. Now, that said, if you really like this pistol and you like the trigger and the way it shoots and the feel of it, that's probably should not be a deal killer, because uh, in most cases you're not going to be taking it apart in the middle of a gunfight, right, or a competition. <laughs> Uh, it's when you get back and you want to clean it and you're at your shooting table, your loading table rather, uh, kitchen table, wherever that might be, and your wife is screaming at you for getting oil on the kitchen table and all that, but at least you've got room, you're spread out, and you know, it's not as big a deal. So I'm trying to, trying to uh, I don't want to exaggerate the difficulty. It is different, 
and and uh, I haven't seen the what the fellow was telling me about on the internet, but I'm sure there's some people really trashing the pistol over that because uh, it would have been me, you know, the first couple days I was working with it, and uh, now it's I regard it as kind of a, it's kind of a weird inconvenience, but it's not a big problem. Okay, so if, if you like the pistol a lot, it wouldn't be a deal killer for me. But now if there's a lot of other negatives in your eyes about the pistol, uh, let me load while I'm yakking at you, then it becomes a bigger issue, doesn't it? Let me try some 115. We got some Federal 115 and 124. Seems to feed both okay. Uh, that's why I have two boxes here, trying to keep them separate. And uh, but. Now, as far as that blowback system, uh, John and I have been shooting it here today, and I'm not so sure that the, uh, it just depends on what you compare it with. Uh, I, I, to me, I don't see it, the recoil being all that soft. I, it, it's a good shooter. Uh, the recoil doesn't bother me, but I shot it beside the Glock 43, for example. The 43 seemed to kick less. You know, I'm not selling Glock 43s, but uh, you know, we've done a lot on it lately. But it just had a less less of a recoil impulse, and uh, the gun weighs 22 and a half ounces by my uh, scales, so that's in the category of a Glock 26. I believe it's right, about 22, 23 ounces. So it weighs about the same, and uh, I believe that's more. Yeah, that's more than the M&P a little bit uh shield and it's it's definitely more than like the 43 and, and those got a little bit more than all those not a lot not a lot but it, it's a little bit heavier than those because uh, the slide's a little wider you know how a lot of the walders are they're great guns whether you're talking ppq or any of those those uh the what was that the, uh, what's the ugliest one the uh pp uh what is it it's it's the nine millimeter we did and i had borrowed from a fellow in clarksville but really strange looking but just a great shooter you know and uh while we're looking at that again yeah you've got a little thicker gun here you've got a it's on the slide now or it's on the frame there up there so you got one in 61 thousandths but i, I just kind of just go by what's yeah put it on the thick one then just eyeball it you see the difference in thickness now that's a glock 43 Okay, it's a lot thicker than all that. And then on the, uh, let's see, close up the shield here and put it on the shield. So it's thicker than the shield and even all the controls on the shield. So, but that's kind of typical, you know, the, the wall, there's just are thicker guns. And a lot of those firearms, they're designed so that it's the same gun in a 40 or a nine. They're kind of designed around the 40, I think, almost. And then they, they also chamber them in nine. Uh, so they end up a little bit thicker. Now, all that said, it's not extremely light, and it's not the thinnest gun, but when you pick it up and you, you feel it, it just feels good. It feels like a good little gun and a good little shooter. Let me, let me do that. Let me put some ammo in it and actually shoot the thing some more. I'm gonna go over there and see if I can hit uh, the gong. I'm gonna try the red plate on the left. <sighs> See what I tell you? Uh, it's just a good little shooter. It'll even hit the cowboy. <laughs> uh, so, you yeah, know, what can you say? Oh, I can say it's pot smoking time. <laughs> Two liter time. <laughs> you know, it's just one of those things, you know, uh, and it's a shame in the gun shop you can't, uh, this is amazing, it's a shame that in the gun shop you can't uh, shoot the thing. You know, I mean, you can't if they have one as a rental gun, because even with the negatives you see in the gun, it, it might be it, all the uh, negatives could be overridden by the way the thing uh, hits in your hands and uh, that's the biggest positive I will have to say it's got a long reset as you saw and it just shouldn't be as good a shooter as it is it, it's a pleasant uh, surprise when you actually fire the thing because uh, I mean I could put that thing in a holster today and be happy carrying it 
I really could. It's it just feels good to me. Now it's it's big, you know, it's too big to I think to try to put in a pocket holster, and that's what I like about my my smaller firearms like the 43. I you know it's just been riding with me and in a pocket holster for you know, the last whatever weeks, and uh, or, or one has. I've had about five different ones here we've had from different sources and uh, so but if you're gonna carry it on your belt the thing just feels good to me uh, when you in defense of the trigger as long as the reset is it, it's almost like a oh here we got a target over here let's shoot this paper it's like a, um, a double action revolver or something when you when you pull it up and, and start pulling the trigger it just uh, up and pull it back far enough. It just feels uh, good. It, it stays on target for me. That's all I can say. It even shoots in the rain. You notice it's raining a little bit. Let's try those plates. Uh, I just when I shoot the thing, as I say, a lot of those negatives go away. I feel like I ought to be carrying this gun. Uh, and another negative I didn't point out: the sights. The sights don't exactly jump out at you. You might be able to see there, you know, uh, not exactly combat sights. You know, quick to pick up or anything. Uh, you know, just not much color there, much white. I prefer a really obvious, uh, you know, sight like the Glock has that you can pick up quickly. So, all that said though, the darn thing is, is just really uh, shootable. And I know we overuse that phrase, but I'll try to get one more round in here. Oh, I know what I was gonna do, try some hollow points before we get rained out. Uh, since it's nice and dirty, make sure it feeds those. Interesting firearm, uh, it's unique, okay? And in a lot of ways, uh, it's compared with the bevy of uh, single stack nines out there but i tell you what my guess is this is a gun that you're going to find people that just love it just absolutely love it and then you're going to find people that hate it if they've held it or shot it too well i don't know if they've shot it they might not hate it what should i shoot let's shoot oh there's a big pot down there look at that baby <laughs> nice how's the cow Ah, uh, man, CCP. Uh, so what's my verdict? I, uh, again, it, it has some negatives. You know, the, the sights are not that great for me. Uh, as far as lining up and target shooting, you know, in no hurry, uh, they're not a big problem. I mean, a lot of people just like black sights and not have any color. I prefer to have some color on them and uh, a white dot, a white outline, that sort of thing. The assembly, disassembly is kind of awkward. Uh, it's got a long reset on the trigger, you know. So all the, the parts don't uh, kind of sum up to the whole. It's just one of those deals. Uh, it ought to be a firearm that I just don't like. But when you shoot the thing, for me at least, John's not as crazy about even the way the trigger works and, and shooting it. But uh, I, I kind of like it. I'm an old single or double action revolver guy. And it just feels good and makes you want to keep it on target. So, so uh, I guess I'll say uh, maybe I should start grading guns, you know, C plus, A minus, and all that sort of thing. But I've outlined the things that are that are uh, positive and negative. And the biggest positive is it's just uh, easy to shoot well. So uh, I guess in some ways that ought to outweigh a few of the other things. So anyway, the Walther CCP is a strange gun it's a bit of a strange bird but uh good shooter in my hands i mean i love it, the way it feels and uh, how it shoots life is good hi i'm zeke with the sonoran desert institute and here at sdi we're extremely proud to be sponsors of the hickok 45 channel you may be asking yourself well, what is sdi sdi is an affordable fully accredited distance learning education program we have an emphasis in gunsmithing and firearms technology. If you decide to become a gunsmith, you'll need to learn proper gunsmithing techniques. And while some people will use an apprenticeship program to gain these techniques, 
A formal education will ensure an organized, more comprehensive learning environment. But when you choose a gunsmithing school, it's still kind of difficult. So it's very important that you choose a gunsmithing school that meet the following criteria. First, look for a nationally or regionally accredited program. And whether distance learning online or through a brick and mortar ground program, a gunsmithing program should always have a hands-on element. And finally, make sure you look for a school with high student satisfaction. Find reviews online, check out its Facebook or other social media, or get on the same social media sites, find some alumni, and ask to speak with them about their experience. And while we're not at SDI today, I do have some of the firearms I've learned to work on and built myself through the SDI program. So let's go take a look at them. Okay, maybe not, we'll just get, seriously, can I not get a chair that fits me? I'm a big guy, dude. So I guess, back to what we were originally talking about. Above all else, find the school that's right for you. It's not always gonna be the distance education programs or the brick and mortar ground schools that are for everybody. Just make sure you do your research on multiple options before you make that decision. But if you want more information on our gunsmithing school, just go to www.sdi.edu or call us at 1-800-336-8939.